United Church celebrates 60th anniversary. Call to relax SME and MSME loan requirements. And people living at Kokoda face transport challenges. Welcome, this is Sunday's News. I'm Kilawani. Member for Mosby Northeast John Cowper is calling on the National Development Bank to relax its loan requirements to allow local MSME and SME owners to access the 80 million kina fund set by the government for SME projects. Cowper says the structure set by NDB is not working. In 2019, the government made a commitment of 1 billion kina to boost the micro, small, medium enterprise and small, medium enterprise sector as part of its initiative to empower people through SMEs. Must be noticed MP John Cowper, who has allocated more than 2 million kina to roll out SME projects in his electorate, has been vocal on SME funding. Cowper says the structure set by the National Development Bank and Trade, Commerce and Industry Department is unaffordable to majority of the local SME owners to access the funds. He says the guidelines to acquire loans must be relaxed. The structure that put in place by commerce and industry with NDB is not working. It's really not working because that policy does not open up for our bottom-up micro SME and SME business. And one of uh, out of 25,700 mothers, I think one of my mothers are not qualified. So they have to relax on the policy and the guidelines that they are setting. The government has already released 80 million kina to the National Development Bank to drive the MSME and SME policy. While the NDB MSME and SME rollout program also aims at targeting the majority of the unreached potential MSME and SME customers in line with the government's SME policy, Kaupa says NDB should be considerate to the marginalized MSME and SME owners to allow them to tap into the funds set by the government. So I'm appealing to the Minister for Commerce and NDB and the bureaucrats in commerce and industry to allow to give breeding ground or open up for our micro SME and SME people to access these funds. Otherwise, as it is now, nobody's already nobody's getting from the 80 million that has been allocated by the government. It's not serving the purpose. Meanwhile, NDB has put in place new 2021 loan funding targets for borrowers throughout its branches in the country. Suli Suli, National MTV News. It is impressive to see micro, small to medium enterprises helping to improve the lives of individuals and communities, also seeing talented, skilled professionals in their trades. Central Province has some unique businesses that were also present last weekend at the Central Province Agro-Tourism Festival. Micro, small to medium enterprises are doing well in the country with Papua New Guineans using their skills and interest to make a living not only for their benefit, but also for the benefit of the wider community. The first annual Central Agro-Tourism Festival held last week showcased MSMEs with interesting and innovative stories. Floriculture has become a blooming business in the nation, and women from the Sogeri area of Central Province have come together to plant rare and unique blooms. In Sogeri, Koeri areas, they came, both men and women, they came attended a, a week training. And from uh, after the week training, we identify, um, they are, since they attend the training, we see the potential in them, that they, they have the passion in flor, flower. Areas in the central province, like Sogeri, have the potential to plant flora that once were unique only in certain provinces. Floriculture industry is a big growing industry in Papua New Guinea and most of the flowers, especially the rare unique blooms that uh, the islanders are growing, we see the Sogeri has the potential to grow those unique blooms. Since Sogeri is under Hiri, Hiri and Golela district, they can really farm and grow those unique and rare blooms. 
Most MSMEs, especially in the agriculture sector, have been urged to get into groups and work as cooperatives by the central provincial government. Uh, and the best form of organization in this is to, is to uh, establish themselves as a cooperative societies. So that's one encouragement that we, are, we, we want to promote. There's a variety of uh, women group, uh, fa uh, family groups, yeah, co cooperative groups. Small businesses in some instances also grow from skilled personnel who in their own hard work and determination have learned the skills of their trade. Having the art of sewing is something that is unique and some have been sewing professionally on their own, like this woman from Aroma. So far, I've been doing corporate ways. For, uh, since I started in 2019, I, my first order was from uh, Medellin Fisheries. So it was uh, more than 200 plus worth of items. And from there, I did this Nakia. And also at the same time, I was doing uh, subcontract for other tailorings. Having unique products also attracts interest. And this teenager, Kimberly Banda, sells products by Papua New Guineans from the skin of a cow. Biological farablo me one play as me business development official about district, Kasmea Banda. So I'm the one who I'm informing me plan, I'm plan carry out something like I'm some plus talo must be. Bilu want a belt. Na I got on the side bag to see all the class to farablo me. Yeah. I'm the lady. I'm Sialum. Fidelis Sukina, National MTV News. A new junior high school will be established at Mount Koyari area to cater for the increasing number of students from that area. This decision was approved by Karakuhiri District Development Authority in a meeting held recently. Karakuhiri MP Peter Isoaimo says this is a way forward for integral human development for the people of Mount Koyari. The Kairukuhiri District Development Authority meeting was held in Efogi Village, Ward 22 of Koyari Local Level Government. The meeting was specifically to discuss the establishment of a new Koyari Junior High School in the area. The DDA also approved 250,000 kina to be made payable to the Ward Development Committee. This is for the construction of some double classrooms and dormitories. Uh, to ensure um, materials aboard at least for uh, construction of um, some double classrooms or one or two double classrooms and uh, dormitories for for students from the nearby villages on the on the other mountain ridges from around here the Koyari local level government is one of the most remote LLGs in central province. Over the years, students from the area have to travel long distance to Mount Diamond Secondary School or other schools in central province. With the new junior high school, students will remain in the village to do grades 8 to 10. And the school will cater for students from Efogi Village and neighboring villages located on the mountain ranges of Koyari. The local MP says the school will support the government's 166 policy. We want the the students from here to remain up here and, and, and do high schooling to uh, an age and, and, and time when they really mature to, to move on to doing uh, the higher schooling or grade 11 and 12 down in uh, other schools. The Kairuku Hiri MP further adding that the intention to build this junior high school is to keep students away from exposure. He says the Mount Koyari area is a good learning environment with a climate suitable for the students and it is a way forward for integral human development for the people of Koyari. I don't want to have the first children uh, you know, pushed out into urban areas so quickly so they get exposed to um, all the destruction and in social life that goes on there. Um, it's a good learning environment. The climate is suitable for for kids to live in and study. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. 
Karakuhiri District Development has also approved for all deteriorating roads in the district to be upgraded. The DDA have also resolved to buy some machinery to help out in fixing the roads. This is to ensure the roads are fixed in record time for the benefit of the people. This resolution was made during the DDA meeting held in Efogi village recently. Fixing all the uh, 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 deteriorated road conditions or roads in Kairukohiri. So um, we have also uh, resolved to to buy some machinery to help out with this because contracting uh, roadworks to contractors uh, really costs a lot of money. And we only have limited funding. So I'm thankful to the board, DDA board members for arriving at that resolution that we need to buy some machinery and equipment like uh, grader and some tippers to ensure our road, road works are carried out, excuse me, in, uh, in, in record time so our people can enjoy market accessibility and all other else. Thank you. The people of Koyari living along the Kokoda Trek have been faced with transport challenges for many years. A local from Efogi village in the Kairukuhiri district of Central Province says, given the remoteness of the village, they have to walk long distances to catch a PMV to the city. Teachers teaching in a primary school in Efogi are also faced with the same problem. Efogi village is located on the mountain range of Mount Koyari in central province and it is located along the famous Kokoda Trail. A local says there are no better road access and people are struggling to access basic services and they have been struggling for many years. Balush, I'm losing my blood pennies. Chopa, I'm coming to us regularly, I'm going to come, I'm going to come to us. So, my blood cut off pennies, I'm going to come to us. The only way that people have go reaching must be um, through walking. According to the local, the only way to access basic services in Port Mosby is by plane or helicopter. However, with the airfield being closed over three years ago, the people have no choice but to walk the Kokoda Trail. He says helicopter services into the area are also not consistent, and people from the area are also dying as there is no access to basic health care services. We think the transport system from the plane is top is that uh, only only less long kind of them run nothing. Aviation business only run here only less long run nothing because it's a waste of uh, waste of fuel now or something or them only come or them not only no working good money. Even though when we have trackers walking into, but still, we play in case loyal or forgive way. Mama Karim Bell and I mean died too because no got transport, no got sample means. William Iga is the head teacher of Efogi Adventist Primary School and he has been living in the area for over eight years. He says the only source of income for most people is through the trekking business. And with COVID-19 affecting businesses, the trek is now closed, which affects most people in the area. And they have to walk long distances to get school supplies. Most of the community, they live on the trek, yeah, thing. Support all payers, all buy all, all boys, kiss him, buy him, kai kai family, school fee also, especially come to side of school as a teacher. Life is mad, the parents can afford to pay the school fee because all men are kissing, kai kai na salim low. Track is tough. Right now, me plan up long kokoda track, na me walk long tok tok. Na me plus have a kiss him. The only way me plus have survive is kokoda track. The people are now appealing to the civil aviation minister to end so plane services are restored in their area. That's coming for the trackers. We are two group companies that has come in place to help the and service flight and run during those time. It was easy for us, but after the pandemic came up, we were kissing big plane time threat. When there is plane, we go no got plane, but we were stop. For those who can walk, they can walk. Some we can't walk, we were stop the solo. Yeah. Civil aviation minister, suppose you can stop. You suppose you had me stop. Uh, he got, he got some people or some people are stop on need blown. Uh, uh, third level aviation, please. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. 
The Shark Calling Festival in New Island Province has been declared as a national event on the Tourism Promotion Authority calendar. The announcement was officially made by the Chairman of the Special Parliamentary Committee for Tourism and Culture and member for Nawaib Kennedy Wenge. Wenge, along with TPA officers, were present to witness the festival. It's not just a legend from a mythical place, nor a fictional scene from a Hollywood blockbuster movie. With just a shake of a special rattle seeds from the bush, striking of the deep blue sea with a stick and blowing of a conch shell, a shark is called up to the surface of the water and caught as if it were in some kind of obedience trance. Even the weather is controlled through a ritual to ensure the sea is smooth and calm. This ancient practice passed down from generations can only be found in particular parts of New Island province, including Messi and Kontu in the west coast and Jowl to the north. In a bid to preserve this dying ancient tradition, the people of Messi decided it was time to reawaken the shark calling festival after it was stopped for a number of years. The two-day shark calling festival was held at Messi from the 22nd to the 23rd of July. New Island Governor Sir Julius Chen officially opened the event. Event organizer and local elite John Merebo said there is a lot more that happens to the lead-up of the actual shark calling event. This includes a whole body, mind and spiritual process. Initiations begins in the houseboy and involves a whole month of fasting and other restrictions to remain pure and clean before going out to the sea. It's a sacred tradition and most of its information is kept secret within the confines of individual houseboys. Individual clans also have their own distinct corn shell calls. Once a shark is caught and brought back to the shore, the cone is blown to notify the clan that their clan member has caught a shark and ready to share with the entire village. The shark calling festival was witnessed by the chairman of the Special Parliamentary Committee for Tourism and Culture, Kennedy Wenge, and officers from the Tourism Promotion Authority. He officially announced that the New Island's shark calling event would be declared a national event in the TPA calendar. This announcement was warmly welcomed by the locals. Suli Suli, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. When we come back, we bring you tonight a closer look. Stay with us. Welcome back. The plight of coffee farmers and people living in Kabum district continues to be highlighted as they struggle with poor transport and high costs. A small group of people have invested time and money into helping local farmers. Some of the pictures for this story were supplied by freelance producer Maisen Hongito, who is in Kabum. Nibako is a 20-minute drive away from Kabum Station. It's located on the eastern part of the district. And for a local person, it takes almost an hour to walk if you're carrying store goods and market produce to sell in the market. And despite the hardships, this is where a sizable portion of more of his coffee production comes from. Coffee prices have been unstable and the people have to carry bags of coffee and walk for several hours before reaching the station. Then they have to transport them to Wasu for prices ranging from 3 kina to 5 kina per kilogram. Narito Oki, a father of three from Nimbako, is a nursing officer at the Kabum Health Center. His wife is a primary school teacher at Kabum Primary. Narito recently began buying coffee after years of seeing his people struggle. He is one of many others who have tried to support communities where service delivery and transportation is difficult. For a district like Kabum, the cost of service delivery and transportation drives up the prices of goods and services. For instance, a 250,000 kina classroom in Leh City will cost upwards of 600,000 kina when it reaches the district. The price of rice, sugar and canned food doubles and triples the further you go away from a port or a transport stop. It is against this backdrop that Narito operates. On average, a Toyota Land Cruiser can carry 10 to 15 bags of coffee from Nimbako to Kabum Station and then to Wasu 
but it all depends on the weather and the road condition. A reliable revenue source is almost absent. Paying for school fees, health care and basic needs can be a problem because the people depend heavily on coffee, a seasonal crop that doesn't always guarantee money all year round. And the district's isolation means that it's very difficult to get to. In 2015, during the drought, the high costs of transporting food supplies to drought-stricken areas meant that schools and health services had to close for extended periods. And the situation is the same in other local-level government areas in Selepet, Komba, Dayamos and Yus. We bring you more stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. One of the founding United Church congregations in Papua New Guinea, Barocco United Church in NCD, celebrated its 60th anniversary celebrations yesterday. Opened under the United Church in North Australia in July 1961, Barocco United Church also launched its plan for a new church building as part of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations. This was how Barocco United Church looked like in the 1960s and 70s. A lot of expatriates working and living in Port Moresby were members of the congregation back then. After being opened on July 22, 1961 under the United Church in North Australia, Barocco United Church has had Australian pastors serving at the congregation until after PNG's independence that local pastors from Central Province and NCD have taken up pastoral posts till today. This was enacted by youth ministry members during yesterday's 60th anniversary celebrations. Late Reverend Sione Kami also served at Boroko United Church as a pastor and later went and formed what is now Reverend Sione Kami Memorial Church not far down the road from Boroko United Church, a unique part of the church's history. At one stage, the church was known as Boroko Motu Congregation, whilst Reverend Sione Kami Memorial Church was known as Boroko English to cater for various language-speaking churchgoers in the city at the time. Thursday, July 22 this week marked 60 years of the church's existence in which the congregation ran a program reflecting on the church's history through slideshows and testimonies by elderly church members. Yesterday, it was time to really celebrate the journey that the church has been through. And part of the celebration was to establish and launch plans for putting up a new church building. Unveil this project. Superintendent Minister for the North Port Mosby Second, which Boroko United Church comes under, Reverend Raka Aiga said in launching the new church building plan that it is the right time for it. 60 years, Diamond Jubilee is the right time to rebuild the church. God described the church of, in Jerusalem, my church is in ruins because they were destroyed by the enemies. Ours is a different scenario. And it has has grown old. It does not hold the glamour, the splendor, the beauty when it was young. The church has grown old. And so the, the, the church, the Boroko of today, it's the right time to rebuild. Currently serving minister for the congregation, Reverend Saik Pitoy, says given the caliber of church members, he is confident the vision of the new church building will come true. So while we are celebrating this milestone for our 60th anniversary, we also have plans to build a new church in its place. And I, I feel honored to be uh, the pastor at this time, but it's also a very huge responsibility. I know with God's help, we'll be able to do it. Frank Amini's late father, Patrick Amini, was a former congregation chairman 
and it was his father's dream for a new church building for Barocco United Church. Frank is part of the committee put in place to plan and build the new church infrastructure. In order for us to demolish uh, uh, this uh, infrastructure, we'll, we'll need to um, uh, work in stages, uh, main phases really. Uh, we'll be building a multi-purpose hall, as it was mentioned um, in one of the announcements, and then after that, uh, that's the first phase of our project. Then we'll go into the actual uh, building of, of the new church hall. And uh, we try to maintain as much of the original uh, uh, structure, you know, um, to, because of its significance. Huh? The church currently has about 200 active members, mostly originating from Abao and Rigo districts of Central Province, whilst a minority come from other parts of Central Province, NCD and other provinces in the country. Various styles of singing and dancing, which the church has been known for over the years, were put on display yesterday, marking the special occasion that brought back great memories of the past, even for those that have passed on whilst serving in the church. Denny Sorere, National MTV News. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Turkai Sports. The Southern Conference of the National Soccer League got underway yesterday in Port Mosby as teams took to the field at the PNG Football Stadium. Hekari United started off proceedings with a bang, handing a 6-1 defeat to Star Mountain FC in the opening match. Hekari United kicked off their 2021 National Soccer League campaign with a thumping victory over Star Mountain FC, six goals to one. Hekari showing their class and skill in their first hit out, firing a one-in shot to all their rivals in the Southern Conference. It's been it's been hard for uh, for us to train as a team uh, due to the COVID uh, restrictions, and um, but the boys did well. Uh, we were looking forward to play Star Mountain, and. Uh, our last game, uh, they beat us, so uh, we were looking forward for that game. We trained so hard for this game, and the first game is always important. Uh, we win this one today. The game was all wrapped up for Curry by halftime, taking a 3-0 lead into the break, with two goals from Kolu Kepu and Solomon Rani scoring once. Undeterred by the scoreline, Star Mountain came out firing in the second half, able to work their way through the Hikari midfield with creative passages of play. However, they were let down by the poor final delivery to their forwards. But Star Mountain's persistence paid off when Eka Philemon scored a brilliant goal, curving the ball past Hikari's keeper for his side's solitary point. This in the team, uh, but I still have my senior players. Uh, they are base of they are the backbone of my team. Uh, we're still going, they're still going, and uh, uh, we work around them. Uh, as you can see, uh, I managed to sub uh, most of my senior players just to rest them because uh, we, we already got the win in my bag. So uh, we're looking forward for our next game. From then on, it was all Hakari as they turned up the heat on the Star Mountain defence, scoring another three goals. Nigel Dabinyaba scored twice, while Solomon Rani claimed the second goal of the match. Huxley Lovai, Chukai Sports. The Minister for Sports and Higher Education Research, Science and Technology, Wesley Raminai, on Thursday thanked PNGFA for their submission to kick start the NSL season. Raminai cautioned PNGFA and competition organizers to adhere to COVID 19 protocols and practice preventative measures. With the COVID 19 around the corner, I can see that. Uh, Football, you follow the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, now we've got the Delta variant, we've got one or two cases already in the country. But let's be vigilant, let's be more serious about it. While we are playing our sports, while we are playing football, we need to make sure PNGFA and the staff make sure the protocols are followed. Saving life is better. So we need to do that. Uh, soccer is one of those sports where it's able to get okay from our controller uh, to kickstart. 
to the PNGFA and the NSL team and those who work behind the scenes to make sure this competition is going on, where I'm not like to comment those behind the team. And that ends Trukai Sports. The weather report is next. All the details after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Southern region, Port Mosby, cloudy with few showers, moderate to fresh southeast winds. Daru, cloudy with some showers, fresh southeast winds. Kerama, Alotau and Popondeta, cloudy with some showers. In the Momase region, lay, brief showers, light southeast winds. Medeng, cloudy period with brief showers. Wiwek, few showers, light southeast winds. Vanimo, cloudy with some showers. New Guinea Islands, Lorengau, caving, partly cloudy, light southeast winds. Buka, cloudy with some afternoon showers. Kokopo, Robal and Kimbe, brief showers, light southeast winds. And the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka and Kundiawa, cloudy with some showers. Mendi and Wabeg, cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorm. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's the news, sports and weather for today, Sunday the 25th of July 2021. Until next time, be safe, pleasant viewing, bye for now.